Okay, so you might notice something slightly different. I'm wearing my headset. Now that's because my desktop mic decided it didn't want to play the game today. Anyway, in March, you're going to see Season 2 of Monkey Kid sets hit the shelf. There's seven in the wave, and I was very lucky that LEGO have sent me the sets early. In today's video, I'm going to take a closer look at the legendary Flower Fruit Mountain. Hi guys, welcome back. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to catch me live, I do stream on Twitch three times a week. Head over to twitch.tv forward slash between the bricks. Set number 80024 for the legendary Flower Fruit Mountain has 1,949 pieces and it's going to retail at 169.99 euro. Okay, so with this set all built up now, you can see this is absolutely stunning. It is built in three main sections. You have the core of it being the center of the mountain here. The first section that gets built is this whole side here. And the third section is this whole side here. And it clips together to form the entire mountain. So before we pull it apart and take a look at each of the components, let's just have a look at the whole thing in its entirety now it is slightly large and it does struggle to fit in my frame so i am doing the best i can to try and show it off in all of its glory one thing that i really liked about this set is the details around the clouds and you can see here on the bottom on both sides and if i just spin this around you can see it at the back here that the designer has built in what looks like this sort of cloud formation or maybe it's meant to be fog or something along those lines to give it an air of uh, you know a very tall mountainscape one of my other favorite features about this model is the way that the building has been done to achieve the mountain itself it's very afol-esque in my opinion in the way that i see afol's building sets for display where they use a lot of snot technique brick stacking and just obscure angles in obscure ways to try and get a more natural formation. Now this isn't uh, completely AFOL-esque in the sense that it still needs to be playable and it has to adhere to the standards of LEGO and uh, you know the, the structure stability so it is a very stable model but it does have that air of AFOL build around it and I really enjoyed the build from start to finish. A couple of really cool play features down here this uh, lever switches over and opens up the waterfalls to reveal the stairs through to the inside of the mountain which lead up to obviously the throne area and on this side we have there's a play feature behind here where you pull and the rock opens up to reveal whatever you have inside the downside to this here is it can be a little difficult to reset so it's easier just to reset it with two hands and put the piece back in one of the techniques that I really liked was the way they used the old ladders from the classic space days to create the staircases in the rock. Uh, it's really clever and quite simple. So to separate the model, just gently separate it from the sides there and you'll see that uh, you can get three distinct pieces which do make it uh, a little easier to move around. So here on the center section of the mountain, all of these decorations on the waterfall are stickers. All of the decorations on the rocks are also stickers. These gold 1x4 tiles uh, have stickers on them as well. However, these 1x1 one one, uh, hearts with the little tree on them are in fact printed. I really do like these cloud flowers. They look really cool. And if we just spin it around and have a look in the back here, you can see there is just a little bit of decoration hiding up in here. They've done really well with the foliage and the flowers and the trees. And I really love the staircase in sand green which i think may be a new color for these stairway elements which could be pretty useful in some castle mocks another really cool element in the center section is the crane up here so um, this is all brick built this bird and we'll take a bit of a closer look at that later on so this is the left side of the mountain and as you can see there's a little bit of a water feature down here a raft that's tethered to the side of the rock there you get a little play function in this axe that's chopping wood and a really nice swing bridge from the center section of the mountain over to the left side here. Up the top here you can see the Monkey King's throne obviously sitting beneath the tree there. These signs here are all stickers 
and if we spin it around to the back you'll see there's another waterfall down inside there and another play feature which rotates this 2x2 two two, uh, round brick here. One of my favorite parts of the entire set is this little piece here. This is a brand new part and I'm going to go ahead and say right now that at some time in the future we're probably going to see a really nice looking Asian gazebo. Keep an eye out for my video in the future where I showcase all of the new colour and new elements for the March 2021 Monkey Kid Wave. So this is the right side of the mountain as you look at it from the front and this was about I think the first five bags or six bags of the set as you build it. As I said before I really love the cloud looking elements that they've built into the base to make it look like it has some real elevation and I really do like the foliage that they've used there's just enough I feel it's not too much but there is plenty if we spin this around you can just see the back here this is the lever for the play feature which opens up that part of the mountain and I guess you could put a minifigure in there or something I'm not entirely sure what that's meant to be uh, if you've watched the TV show and you know please do let me know in the comments below another thing that I really liked about this set was there was plenty of these little sort of nooks and crannies and walkways and places for the population to essentially walk around this mountain and it looks like that it's inhabited and a place where they live the first two figures we're going to take a look at are the battle monkey king there on the left and the evil macaque on the right so if we spin them around you'll be able to see them in their entirety and you'll notice that both of these guys do have some uh, cloth capes and both of them have very similar staffs uh, just in slightly different colors they both have the same hair piece and uh, as you can see there they're in different colors and the Battle Monkey King also has that plume coming out the top of his hair. So with their accessories and hair pieces removed, you can see the prints on the torsos and the legs. Uh, there is a lot of detail in all of the prints and all of these figures. And you'll notice that they both do have uh, jeweled faces. Now I've left the tails on both of these guys because they don't really obscure the view. But one thing you'll notice is that the tails do come out of the body at the back uh, at a 90 degree angle as opposed to straight backwards which is a, a little bit nicer for posing these figures because they do tend to take up a little less room so the next two figures are the apprentice monkey king there on the left and the monkey king on the right as you can see the apprentice monkey king does come with an oar uh, I think he's the one that's meant to be paddling the raft uh, that was down on the side of the mountain there. And the Monkey King has a bit of fruit uh, from the mountain. So with their hair and accessories removed, you can now see the prints on their torsos and legs. And if we spin them around, you'll see that uh, prints on the back and alternative faces. And if you put the tail in the reverse position, you'll see that it hangs rather than sticks up. So essentially you can choose which way you want to have the tails for each of your characters. The next two figures that we have here are Monkey Kid on the left and Baby Monkey King on the right. As you can see, uh, the same hair pieces have been used throughout and uh, the Monkey Kid is pretty much the same Monkey Kid that we've seen in all of the sets before. So keep an eye out in the future for all of the March Wave Monkey Kid figures in one video uh, sometime in the near future. So make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. And with their accessories and hair pieces removed, you can now see all of their printing and their alternative faces. And the last two figs in this set are Brother Monkey and Sister Monkey. And you can see there that one comes with a flower and the other one comes with an apple. In this case, uh, they both have the same hair piece and this time it is in brown. So that's a third color for this set alone. And you'll notice that the tail on the back here is the more traditional tail which sticks straight out the back. With their hair pieces, and accessories removed you can now see all of the alternative faces and the rear prints and you'll notice that these guys also do come with the short legs so here we have the crane which is uh, all brick built and sits atop the mountain uh, I actually really think that this is quite a clever wee build and it represents the bird quite nicely I particularly like the use of those new minifig jumper pieces there in light blue grey and you can pose the wings in a bunch of different ways to make it look like it's flying or that it's sitting and resting and stuff. We take a look at the spare parts now. There is a, a decent amount of them, so if you do want to check them all out, make sure you pause the video now. Okay, so in conclusion, the set took me around 5 hours, 5 hours 30 to build from memory. 
I really did enjoy this build and I would recommend it. I would probably give this a solid 8 to 9 out of 10. There's just so many nice little techniques that have gone into this build. And the detail is really next level for essentially what is a playset. It displays nicely, it sits on the shelf nicely and um, there's enough depth and height to it. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. But in the meantime, please keep safe, keep building and I'll catch you on the next one.